Welcome everybody to the September, uh, October 7th Global Club meeting. Uh, thank you very much for being here today. Dudley Miles, could you lead us in an invitation, please? Oh, well, it's Jeff Brett, could you leave us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Anthony Draper, could you leave us in the four way test? Yes. The four way test is to some deep stay with the first is the truth, second is the fair for all concerned. Uh, before I do bring our sergeant in arms up, um, I know I was extremely tardy on my email this week for this week in Rotary, so I do want to apologize. Um, I know. Uh, it will be on my calendar from here on out to remind me, uh, but Monday was a very chaotic day and I totally slipped my mind, so I did want to apologize for that for anybody who does plan their week on what's going on in Rotary. Now, with that being said, uh, Chuck Wilson, if you come up, please. Hello everyone, good to see you all, uh, great to be here, pretty good uh, turnout, and of course the food Donna, fantastic once again, she had to actually grow a turkey somehow in order to have that available I think, right? <laughs> uh, anyway, any guests here today? Any guests? I didn't think so. Happy Bucks! Anyone? I have something they would like to... Debbie. If this were one o'clock, I would buy a bottle of wine. Buy that. But it's not one o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> so, we'll be there. Now, I'm out of this club. We'll be bagged out of here by two minutes. Um, <laughs> although, an official announced, written announcement has come from Rich. Our director of Vietnam development has cautioned me that he was told we couldn't come to one o'clock. So I guess probably the station for a really good um, positive Vietnam development announcement he was going to be at one o'clock. And it was relatively your happy bus to see him. He went to break down the senior official news when I showed him. He went to break and tell you exactly what it is. So it's really positive to give you What do we need to do? We're all yeah, th curious. Thanks for us being on pins and needles. Well, it'll give you yes, a to look up. All I can say is, Boots Smith and I <laughs> are in this case. Well, we're all locked up for the next 25 minutes anyway. 25 minutes to, to wait. I don't know if we can do it. Right, as long as no one, are there any reporters in here? Say, should, should we click all of our cell phones? No reporters in here? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks, Chris. <laughs> no, we're, we're really happy that a company that's been in Chesapeake for 50 years uh, is going to uh, announced at one o'clock a very large investment here in Chesapeake. Uh, some of you may know of the company that down off Atlantic uh, Avenue is uh, Plopper American. They are going to invest over fifty million dollars uh, in a brand new three-story uh, headquarters building. 
and they're going to do about 80,000 square feet of manufacturing space, uh, about 100 new jobs, average salary is about $65,000. So it's a great project for our city. Mm -hmm. uh, I certainly want to thank Ms. Ritter and City Council, as well as John Maddox and the folks with the Economic Development Authority. They do a great job of supporting our economic development efforts, and this is a big win for our city. Fantastic. And these four quarters from Debbie, so meaningful. But compared to this, I mean, that's, that's fantastic. Every other place in the city will be your day. That's right, there's a change to it. Anyone else? Happy Bucks. All right. Back to our president. All right, as we are all aware, today is our club day, and we do not have any speakers, so to speak, but we are going to have a speaker um, to give a classification speech and ask Lindsay Elliott to come up here. Lindsay Elliott, for those who don't know me, uh, I am with Brittle Associates Commercial and Industrial Real Estate. We are here uh, local in Tufty and in Greenbrier. Um, growing up, I was born in Virginia Beach and moved to Chesapeake at uh, eight years old. Went to Great Bridge School up until high school, and I went to Cape Henry Collegiate School out in Virginia Beach um, all four years of high school. Uh, my first job was at the original mattress factory. I was a salesperson. That's something a lot of people don't know. Um, in 2004, I graduated from, George, um, from Cape Henry and attended George Mason. Uh, I studied tourism and events management and was really wanted to be in a corporate events world and wedding planner. Uh, my junior year of college, I interned at Scope and Chrysler Hall at seven venues and helped in their marketing department uh, to entice entertainers and uh, performers to the area. After, after that, I actually interned my uh, last semester, my senior year of college at Fest Events, uh, and I worked in a couple different departments there. Um, I actually helped them with the Spring Wine Festival and, and worked that event. So when I graduated from George Mason in 2008, it was right in the beginning of the recession, so trying to find a job in the field that I studied for was just about impossible. So I ended up getting my real estate license, and thank goodness, 12 years later, I'm a real estate broker, of course, with Brittle Associates, and um, I really enjoy, I really love what I do. I do a little bit of everything. I wouldn't say that I specialize in any particular um, field. I do sales, leasing, property management, buyer, and tenant representation. Um, I would say what's really the most rewarding um, is working with restaurants. And I told myself a couple years ago that I would really try to bring more of the local type feel, um, non-chain related restaurants to Chesapeake. And luckily, I, we were successful. Some of my clients, um, Black Pelican is one good example of that, um, The Butcher's Son. And then recently, which believe it or not, I have a, um, a new client opening up a restaurant in the Edinburgh section in Chesapeake. So look out for that. I'll probably be posting on Facebook when they will open. It will probably be still a couple months now. But um, it's really important that we support our local Customers are local um, businesses, especially restaurants, because they need us more than any other any other time now. Um, and in closing, um, I live in Great Bridge, where I grew up with my husband Kevin. He works at Dominion Energy, and I have two daughters, Sydney, who is seven, and Kennedy, who is two. So um, please keep me in mind if you know anyone looking for property or looking for a commercial industrial property manager. Um, I'd be more than happy to help them. So, thank you. Geez, Lindsay, you asked about what to speak about. You did a fantastic job, covered all the bases. Thank you very much. 
I'm glad you got that out of the way and taking the next step to your blue badge. Um, John Barry, why are you standing up? And since it is a club day, um, would you mind coming up and giving us a few minutes to update us on what is going on with the Spring Art Show? Read my mind. <laughs> we are cooking along great with the art show. Uh, we've had a few meetings of the committee. The, uh, art, <clears throat> the artist registrations have been open up for, I guess, about eight weeks now. Uh, our early bird registration closed. We closed that out on October 1st. We managed to pick up, uh, well, as of this morning, I believe it's 27 artists, which is fantastic because last year, uh, by the end, we had 35. And so we've still got months and months of time to sign up more artists. So we are really rolling. There's a lot of positive energy. Everybody is very excited about this. I think most people are very optimistic that by the time May rolls around, that we will, in fact, be able to have an event, uh, an outdoor event like this. So, um, and, and I think that the public is going to be very uh, enthusiastic about getting out of their houses and getting out to an event like this because it will have been over uh, a year since an art show has been had. Um, so everybody is just really, really excited about, uh, about getting this and doing this. And we've got sign-ups from out of state. Uh, I've seen them from Florida. I've seen them from Connecticut. I think we've gotten one from Ohio. Uh, a lot of these 27 are, are not artists that signed up last year. We've done a number of uh, Facebook ads, uh, spreading the word around. And it's also worth mentioning that we have not done uh, the MOCA mailing list. You may recall that last year the MOCA emailed their entire boardwalk artist mailing list for us to, uh, to troll for artists, and that is not happening yet this year. I did talk to them, uh, and that is going to happen. Uh, we are just, uh, it's just a question of timing messages because they've got a bunch of their own uh, messaging that needs to get out here in the next month or so, and they don't want uh, mixed messages going out between their art show and our art show. So that will happen, and we'll surely pick up a number of artists from, uh, from that broadcast as well. <clears throat> so in addition to trying to sign up artists, what we've moved on to now is trying to sign up sponsors. And so that is what you will find on your table is our new updated sponsor perspective. Um, we've added new sponsor levels this year. Uh, our prices have gone up a little bit this year. We're being a little bit more optimistic because, you know, last year we said ideally we expected to get about 1,500 people a day. Uh, we think that that number is going to be vastly larger given the timing of the event um, and given that nobody will have been out for such a long time. We expect at least double that per day, maybe more. Um, and also, I mean, we're being more optimistic because, to be frank, I mean, Rotary is kind of in a, we as a group are in kind of a tough spot. Um, as you probably are aware, the wine festival was canceled. And as you're probably also aware, wine festival contributes, you'll have to back me up here, but I believe it's around $30,000 comes from wine festival money to Rotary. And so that's $30,000 this year that we no longer have. And it's going to kind of fall upon us to sort of fill that gap. So when we look at sponsors for the art show, we're not really just looking at it as sponsors for the art show, we're looking at it as sponsors for the Rotary. This is, this is money that we need to go to Codes for Kids and the, the, uh, the Valley Victorian sponsorships and the Rotary Day of Caring and all those things that we want to do that a lot of that money came from wine festival money that we no longer have. So we need to use this show to raise the money to fill that gap so that we can still do all those things that we want to do in, you know, this year, which is going to be tough without it. So take this, and you know, if you can do something, awesome. Uh, more importantly, if you can spread the word to other people, other companies that you may be aware of, Get this information out to them. My contact information is in this packet, my email, my phone number, the website. Tell them how big of a, an event this will be. This will be great exposure. We've got some great opportunities here between the beer garden and the, the, the whole overall sponsor. 
Um, there is going to be uh, beer cup sponsors. That information is not in this packet yet because we are still working out the details on that. Um, but another big thing that we're doing uh, in this show, we're hoping to do, um, is thanks to having the Chrysler gentleman out last year, is the, uh, the, the Chrysler has a mobile glass blowing demonstration trailer. And they will come out and they will do glass blowing demonstrations all day. And that would be a big draw to get people out because people love watching that stuff. I mean, if you've ever been to the, the Chrysler glass blowing studio that they have, they do demonstrations every day and they've got people in there every day just watching people blowing glass. And they will, their schedule's public, the people know where they're going to be and the people will come just to come see that. Um, but that costs money too because they have expenses that are involved. So we have to pay them to come out. So there's a, a new sponsorship level to help cover those costs as well. But again, you'll you'll get, or whoever sponsors that will get exposure, will be announcing who's sponsoring them, will be signage, et cetera, et cetera. So let's uh, pull together and get some interest going for getting this money flowing so that we can do all these great things that we, uh, we want to do as a group. So if there's any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. I must have done a great job covering <laughs> We do not. We do, well, I mean, we do and we don't. I mean, I'm going to sponsor something, so yes, we have a sponsor. I know Doug Davis is going to sponsor something because he did something last year. We just put this together. I just got the final yesterday, and I just printed this today. So we don't have any checks in hand yet, but I do know that we have people who will be sponsoring, but nothing is quote-unquote written on paper yet. Checks. Yeah. Well, there are... We, we're not, there are some things that we're gonna put limits on, there are some things that we won't. So like, I don't really have in my head any limit on artist booth sponsors, because the artist booth sponsors, in, in case it's not clear, if you buy an artist booth sponsor, you're basically paying somebody's entry fee to be an artist. And so when artists are signing up, one of the things in the application is, is do you wanna be considered for a sponsored space? Yes or no? And so, and if they do, they say, why should you be considered for a, a sponsored space? So I guess the limit would be how many artists we have in one sponsored space. Um, but that fee will cover sponsored spaces. And if you buy one, then you'll get a list of the artists that you can pick. If you want, you can pick which artist that you would, you would then sponsor. And then you'll get signage in their booth, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so the limit there, would, I guess, would be the number of people who wanted a sponsored space. Um, performance sponsors, obviously, would be limited by the number of performances that we end up having. Um, we are going to have a limit on the beer garden sponsors. I believe that limit is probably going to be 10. Um, the stage sponsors, the limit is 2. The uh, glass blowing sponsors, the limit is 2 because it's 1 per day. Now, if somebody wanted to go in halfsies with somebody else, I don't have any problem with that. If you, had, if you wanted to go in with another group and each of you wanted to kick in 1,000 and split it on a given day, there's no problem there. Uh, and obviously, we're only going to have one presenting sponsor. Two state, two state sponsors. Sorry. Yes. How much do artists have to pay to participate? Depends upon when they sign up, but it's it's the early bird pricing was one hundred and fifty dollars, which was our actual pricing last year. Now pricing is one hundred and seventy five, and that's good through December first, and then it goes up to two hundred, which is late, uh, which is uh, through I believe February first. Yes. What the type of art? We've like gotten things. people, we've gotten everything already. We've got uh, painters, we've gotten uh, people who do glass, we've gotten people who do drawings, um, we've gotten some wood sponsors, um, sorry, wood artists. I'm trying to think. There's been 27 and I haven't looked at all of them. <laughs> I've just been taking them and filing them where they needed to be filed. Um, Mostly paint, mostly painted, but I, oh, we've had some jewelry, we've had some jewelry. That's mostly what I've seen off the top of my head. I will send this to Jonathan, we'll send it out to the whole list. Anyone else? All right, great, thank you. Thanks, Bob. Kind of put a damper on this. This is an idea um, 
I don't know, Doug and I, for the longest time, thought that Chesapeake was in dire need of a uh, spring event. I mean, the wine festival is obviously the signature event that occurs in the fall, but there's just not a lot of activity going on in the spring. So this is something that we hope to bring to Chesapeake. Um, last year, of course, was gonna be the inaugural event. We got a lot of uh, head steam going on that, and then COVID sort of ripped it away from us as usual. So we're a little bit more prepared this year and going forward, and we've got an early jump on things. Um, not that this event is gonna take over, you know, wine festival and, and the sense of revenues and things of that nature. But we do want to have it you know, raise some money uh, so we can um, help out with the other events. And God forbid something like COVID ever happens again, um, that we're not going to be in such a budgetary shortfall. Um, John, just to correct you, the Wine Festival basically brings in $45,000 to this club to sponsor a lot of events. So uh, for, fortunately, our budget was created knowing or thinking we weren't going to have the Wine Festival this year. Um, but we are still in a big budgetary shortfall. Hopefully, uh, early sponsorship for this event will allow us to do some of the things that unfortunately, right now, we're not gonna be able to do, such as the valedictorians, um, just the, the, the music. Uh, things that we've done every year, for as long as I've been in Rotary, we're not gonna be able to do this year, just because we do not have the money to support it. So early sponsorship for this event will hopefully make up some of those budgetary shortfalls to allow us to continue to do these events that you generally happen in the spring. So I do encourage everybody to uh, see what they can do. If, if they can do sponsorship themselves or their business, that would be great. Um, but certainly spread the word. And we want this to be a big event. Um, you know, as John said, we're optimistic that people are gonna get out in droves when they're able to. And, um, as I said, Chesapeake is sort of starting for an event like this, and it's going to be a lot of fun. And now that we've got, you know, the Rotary name behind it, we've got a lot of uh, basic knowledge swag with the Wine Festival. People know that's a great event, fun event, and we're hoping that people will uh, think this is going to be the same and something to do every spring. So, again, I encourage everybody, spread the word, do what they can to support it. There is just one other thing I wanted to add. If there's concern among sponsors about um, what happens if we don't have the event, the, the, the intention would be if you sponsor the event and the event is canceled, the sponsorship funds would be uh, returned upon request. So it, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's not a, an at-risk investment or anything like that. So. And I know I speak for Scott and Rowan and saying we're trying not to poach on anybody that does sponsor the wine festival event we're looking for new sponsors for this event um, but we do think that there's going to be some bang for the buck uh, not only this year but in years to come this is going to be a very popular event moving on i spoke to gardner for a little while this morning uh, number one he wants everybody to know that he gives everybody his love and uh, is wanting to come back but Given his health issues and the fact that he and his family do have some high risk folks, um, he is a little tentative on coming back right now, but is certainly reconsidering. Um, but what we did discuss is Coach for Kids. Um, he is still wanting to go forward with the Coach for Kids project this year. Despite the fact that many of the kids in Chesapeake uh, are staying at home or some just going back to school, Gardner is very adamant on continuing the project because even if the kids don't come back to school, they still need coats for going out in their normal life. Uh, so that's fine, and uh, we have certainly have budgeted this year for coats for kids, not as much as Gardner originally wanted, but that is a project that we still want to go forward with. Part of the board meeting uh, that we're going to have this afternoon is to go over other fundraising opportunities. And we've been batting around a few things over the last several months. But with the finalization, so to speak, of Wine Festival being canceled, now it's imperative that we just not talk about doing some other type of fundraising events, but actually get down to the nitty gritty of coming up with something and actually moving on it. Um, we've got, obviously, Coach for Kids, uh, which is a December project. We've got Tom's International Project that we also fund. Uh, so I'd love to come up with some sponsorship, uh, not sponsorship, some other fundraising activities. 
um, that will help those two projects in particular um, for this fall. So anybody who wants to stay after uh, for the board meeting, I encourage you to come. Uh, there's going to be some other issues to be discussed that uh, with board approval we'll be presenting to the club uh, in the next couple of weeks uh, to basically be voted on. Um, but if there is nothing else, or, oh, Debbie, yes, ma'am. It is a very unfortunate decision, and much like Wine Festival, um, our names are, uh, Rotary is attached to these two events in particular. And, you know, decisions had to be made on the possibility of these events becoming super spreaders and having Rotary's name attached with events, which caused the super spreading virus. And that's just something that we can't afford to do going forward. Um, especially with the loss of potential sponsorships due to something along those lines. So difficult decisions do have to be made. Um, with the wine festival, I know there were other ideas floated, uh, but I think the ultimate decision is we didn't want to cheapen the wine festival to do something generic this year. Um, and it, it's just a decision that we made. And I know Anthony has the same feelings about the parade as well, um, that it's an event that Unfortunately, if we don't have it this year, we'll come back bigger and better and stronger the following year. We don't want to do something uh, to cheapen the overall event by doing something generic at this time. But with that being said, the ideas that have been previously proposed is what we were considering. If there are some new ideas that Debbie, you have received that are more palatable and something that we could do that's going to still put on the quality event that we normally do while protecting the public, then absolutely, we'll be open for that. So, um, yeah, definitely get with Anthony, and Anthony and I will get together and we'll discuss that going forward, so. Anybody else? Yes, John? I'll make this really quick. I know there's a lot of negative things going on, but most of you may or may not know, I'm the past president of all our in the market that we have a huge retail studio that does, and we just added, I think our eighth national client, which is Total Wine. For two years. So all you guys are drinking wine. We love you. Thank you. <laughs> they have data stores in 13 different states. And what they're doing is they're going in and picking up retail space that people are not going out of business and creating new stores. So it's going to be like 200 stores. Some of them in other states actually so a little bit too. But thank you all for drinking so much wine. We, we really, really do appreciate it. <laughs> Stu, you have some?
And so, uh, leadership workshop is that? Yes, um, part one, Burgery Leadership Institute, which is a three week part training program. Uh, it's actually it's a zone thing, but since the zone hasn't figured out how to do it just yet, we're doing it in our district. Janet will be a participant, I'm one of the facilitators, um, and then we'll do parts two and three uh, in the spring so that uh, anyone who wants to be an RLI grad in one year cycle can do it. And that's this weekend? It's this weekend. You know, they talked about sending an email out to everybody about that, and I never got one. So that was something that I was interested in, and when they talked about it at the board meeting or whatever, when the district person was here, they said they would send an email out, never saw it. Yeah, that was something Judy said that she was going to get out to us at some point. I know I saw the email, but I don't know. But I will come back with the date. I do have a date for part one again. Well, in particular, the three of us, if we happen to get any email that has that information that we want to send just to the general club in case anybody else is interested, um, if we could just think about that when we get it. So, but you said in January, there's no firm date as of yet? Or? It's, it's firm. I just, I don't think this week's true. And I want to say okay. 23rd, 25th, whatever that Saturday and Sunday are. And we'll be doing part um, one again, and we'll be doing part two for people like Jen who are looking to come done work. All right. Anything else? Again, we have the board meeting immediately following this, but if there's nothing else for the good rotary, we are adjourned.